Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn Smart Coding. This is Karthik, thanks for joining with me today. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create .NET Core Web API project using a generic repository. So if you look at my screen, in this GitHub repository, I already have a project called Essential Product API, which is developed using .NET Core 3.1 framework and a simple four layer structured project, right? So in this, uh, basically what we had is you know we had different services different repositories you see this each repository and in each repository the methods were almost repeated so if I have a get create post update all those things right so these these methods are literally repeated in every single repository here right if we go to the the product repository it's going to be almost same and then maybe extra a few more you know methods will be there but they're all kind of repeated but that's a basic level uh you know the the web api that i was showing you guys but this is what i've thought of uh, giving you a uh, different flavors so i have now developed the same exact api i mean to say this is the the api that we are talking about so we have categories we have products and uh, we have wish list and some of you might already know these api that we are seeing here those apis are used to develop this angular project and whatever you're seeing all this here in this angular project they're all coming from this api right so what i've done is i have created a new project which will reflect exactly same api same structure everything same but there's one major difference I have used the generic repository pattern, which will uh, be much benefited uh, to avoid the duplicates of code. So instead of going through each and every single thing again, which will be kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the link for the actual uh, .NET Core Web API tutorial here. You see this under this channel. This is my channel. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the link of this .NET Core Web API complete course, which includes the entity framework code, all the operations that we were discussing now, right? So you have everything in this video. You can follow this video and uh, you can complete the complete development here. However, what I'm going to show you here is, I'm going to show you a small replacement of the duplicate code. So. Uh, let's go one by one here. What is the difference between this project and uh, the project which is there in the github? I'm going to give you the source code of this as well and also when you start the project I will uh, preload certain data so you don't need to do everything from first you will still get some data Okay, so uh, let's get started. So this is the project and uh, Just a high level who have not seen this we have an API project We have the code project data project and service project Core project will have all the tables, whichever is in the database. So that's what called core. Okay, the category product, product owner, wish list, they're all tables. Tables are directly transformed here and this is what is directly transformed to the database. Okay, and now data project will hold all the operations that is with respect to the database. Anything that you need to talk to database, this is the layer that we use. Okay, service is kind of a middleman. So within the API project, we don't talk to the database directly. We go through the service. Why do we go through service? So let's say any business logic that is there. Okay, so the API will call the service layer. The service layer will then have some business logic to determine whether to insert, to change some data, whatever it is. All the business logic will come in the service layer and service layer will in turn call uh, respective methods in the data layer and eventually data layer will either create, update or receive some data from the database. So that's the overview of this project. Okay. Now, like I said, right. So we have category repository, all this product repository, all these repositories. The, the difference is here. If I take just category repository, okay, let's take a difference. So in this category repository, I do not have any methods. You see this, there's only one commit method. Okay. But they, I do not have any method, but if I go to the existing project and let if I go to the category repository you see this I have so many methods one two three six methods similarly if I go to product repository I will have several methods like uh, let me take a look so product 
okay so product repository will have separate methods and uh, we're gonna avoid all these things so where do we start this so let's define a uh, interface called i generic repository okay so the i generic repository will have these many methods so this method is such all the method which is here is all generic method okay so this method is going to retrieve uh, a, some data from the table and we can actually dynamically filter that records or uh, do some extra include of extra tables of a particular table like product table has product owner table so the product owner table also can be retrieved that is called graph level uh, data that you retry so you can do all those things and uh, you can retrieve a particular entity based on the id you can delete an entity you can delete more than one entity you can update entity right all those you know things and then a uh, few methods that have uh, added called detach entities so detach entities is basically uh, when entity framework starts uh, uh, some records from the database ideally it tracks it and sometimes we want that to be tracked and uh, when unintentionally tracks some records and if you try to get the same record again it will throw you some error it will not allow you to insert or update anything because it will tell you that uh, a entity with similar record has been already been tracking so you cannot track again right something like that one person has already gone we cannot have the same person again that person is already gone right so something like that so when that happens we we give that tracked entity and then we say don't track it leave him release him something like that so that is why these methods are here okay and we need these methods i will cover where it has been affected now once we have this repository, let's go to the implementation of this repository. So if I go to the implementation of this repository, we can clearly see this is the generic repository class of T type. When we say T type, it could be any class. It could be a product class, it could be a category class, product owner, wish list. All these things, you know, comes into picture. That's why T entity. So that implements uh, this I generic repository and this is the uh, place where we say this ha the one that is inheriting this has to be a class and it has to be a new class okay so that's what this statement is and uh, rest and all is same so once we have a generic type we implement all these methods here okay and uh, when we implement this we don't specifically say which entity meaning we don't specifically say whether it is a category or a product or any other table because whoever is initiating this call will already know what entity it is okay so i will i will tell you how it is working so let's let's take an example we have implemented all these methods okay and in the method itself in the get we can clearly say whether to track or not to track so if you don't if you say don't track if you send a boolean variable as no tracking it is avoiding a tracking okay so all these baseline methods are done these are all exactly same how you saw in the previous video okay it's just that it's generic that's the only difference okay now let's say i wanted to make use of all these methods in the category class in the category repository all what i need to do is so let me compare if you see the i category repository here it is not in inheriting or implementing any other repository right any other interface directly this interface has these methods so the difference here is this one is going to implement i generic repository of type category that is what t entity so if you if you see this is t entity right so that is what this is so we are saying create a generic repository for type category class which means let's go to the implementation of this method this category okay you see this this category repository which is implementing i category repository which means i category repository in turn has i generic repository so we have to implement or inherit the implementation of such thing so that's why we say generic repository we inherit generic repository of type category so what this means what this literally translate is we are actually copy pasting this entire piece of code logically okay logically all these codes are coming and sitting here when it runs 
on top of it we have an extra method which is specific to this category repository okay so why do we have the specific method anything that you do with category like update save delete we initiate and then we call this method to save the changes instead of having the save changes in the directly in the generic repository we will have it separate okay so that you can do many operations by using generic repository and finally call this commit async to commit all the data that you are tracking by entity framework that's the reason okay so now you know this logic how this is done similarly if I go to the product repository, I have I product repository, same I generic repository of type product, and then if you see the implementation of this, it is exactly same copy paste, but instead of category we pass product. Now these three methods are specific to this repository, which are not available in this generic repository. That is always possible. You can always have a specific implementation required for a particular repository. So they're all kind of extra things. So I've implemented these things here. They're all specific to this product. And uh, we happily implemented this. These are all same as how you saw in the previous video. Okay, we are just using the tables and then include a couple of tables. We're using the link queue to take, add no tracking, make it a asynchronous list. All these things are same. So now you know how this data structure has been changed. Okay, this data layer is changed with respect to so this data layer has been changed with respect to the data layer that we have it here we don't repeat all these things you see this these many uh, methods are not repeated only three extra methods were there all the six method in each repository six times of four repositories how much 24 methods you don't need to write 24 methods which is of of no use of writing a duplicate code so now we have made very generic so only six times and if you have a hundred another hundred repository for each class they're all saved you don't need to do anything again and again okay so that's the goal of this so anyone who is learning the dotnet core you know how different uh, you know architecture has been done this is one of the other simplest architecture there are other good architectures like onion architecture uh, cqrs pattern those are all i will teach from the first which is uh, which is required uh, for you to understand not like this so so now we we saw how this data structure is done all right so rest and all is same so th there is no change in the service because they are anyway going to call the i category it doesn't matter okay so there are few things that will impact if you compare this piece of code with the the code uh, without this generic repository right the code if you see that in the github the, the other changes, right? If you go to this API project where we do the validation. So for example, let's come to the view model. Let's come to create category. Okay, so let's see where we have used this. Okay, so how do we find where we have used it? Let's see where we have find. Let's go to generic repository. Let's go here and see who is using this. You see those three references there? And there's one reference, so let's find out. Shift F12 will give you the reference. So it's there in the category repository. So what is this category repository doing? So someone is calling this detach entity. Okay, so let's let's track that. Let's track it down. So it's been called from here. You see this update category. So let me give an example here. What's going on? Why do we use this? So let me go and show you update category right so here update here so basically what we are doing here is we are uh, trying to pass the category id name and its active flag right stay with me for a second stay with me for a second all right so we are passing this information and when we receive this call like you saw in the previous video it will come and hit here for validation so basically what are we validating we are trying to see whether the ID that was passed do really exist in the database. So when you call this method get category by ID, okay, so let's go back trace where it is going. So it's coming here. It is internally going and calling the generic repository find async. See find async if you hover it, it clearly says it will find and it will start tracking this record. See, it is going to track this record immediately and return the data. Okay, so which means once you receive the data here, 
the record is tracked now let's say you don't have this okay this will all validation will pass then what happens it comes to the controller it comes to the category controller right it comes to the category controller now this line will hit we will try to update here so let's go inside this method we're trying to update here it is trying to attach this entity okay here is the problem what this will happen is it will try to attach the entity but it won't attach it will say that the entity which was tracked here already has been tracked and you cannot retrack again so that is why we have this method and kind of a small uh, cons in terms of uh, generic repository pattern you need to be very careful in attaching and detaching the entity so i am detaching that entity which means uh, there is no more contact between the entity which was tracked here now it's all fresh we had, we we verified it we detached the entity so now because of that when here comes after the validation when this method executes it will freshly track the entity and update the entity properly so that was the only difference between uh, why we have to uh, detach the entities okay other than that everything is same this is this is a good copy and um, just for your reference guys i have added some static files here product and categories um, i'm going to leave some data here uh, the reason why i'm going to leave some data here is if you come here when you run this project if you hit here you will get the data here okay because i have preloaded the data and why i have preloaded the data if you come to startup class here is the thing right so not everyone will have the database ready in their mission right so if you have the database ready if you follow the other step to create a database or you can come here under the data project under the migration you should have some script here uh, okay i'll check it should be there in the other project so you can either execute the script and execute the database or follow the previous video to execute the database or just simply come in this and use this in memory option so when you use this in memory option what will happen is in the startup class in the program i have written a piece of code to seed the data so it will create the database the structure that we have the migration that we have and it will seed the data so when you go to initialize data it's going to seed some data from these two static files so that that's the that's the thing that was done here okay all right so now you know how to do this you have uh, already learned of uh, the complete web application development web api development using dotnet core 3.1 with four layers and this is a uh, generic pattern layer generic repository pattern layer all right good i hope you understood this and you have an a chance to download this code and go through it any questions you have let me know in the comment section uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and if you want more or a different types of video please let me know in the comment section only then i know what is expected and what i can provide thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel like it share it comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon